Hello everybody, can you hear me okay? Let me know. I'm just going live now, I'm running a few minutes late because just as I decide to go live, Google Chrome decides that it needs to do an update. So sorry I'm a little bit late. Nothing like starting with a bit with a few technology issues at the beginning of a live stream. Anyway, as I'll um, kind of explain a little bit while I'm talking later. <clears throat> I kind of left this one uh, today a little bit last minute. Um, it's on a it's on a different day than I used to. I used to do it on a Wednesday evening at eight. So um, I haven't been really around doing so much uh, live streaming recently, and there's a really good reason for that. And I'm I'm sort of going to go into that. Um, I've just been really sinking inwards, following my heart, not, uh, my, my heart's kind of been guiding me to do the inner work rather than getting out, doing marketing, sharing about my business and all of that kind of thing. Um, it's been quite a journey over the last, gosh, couple of months, maybe even a bit longer. So what I wanted to share was about um, something that happened to me back in November and um which i have shared before i know um this was when my my friend um her mum died and sue was such a beautiful kind and loving soul uh you know i'd got to know her we'd all been on holiday together so she was the mum of one of my best friends she was so inspiring um because she discovered a whole new lease of life in her 70s and she was really living it and going for it and uh, we were on holiday and then a few weeks later she died really suddenly and i hadn't been prepared for the impact um that this would cause but it was like a rock being thrown into a pool and just like shaking everything up and casting these ripples throughout my whole life um and following this sad time i also heard news or uh, from lots of other different friends and and um through my family something like there must have been about 14 or more people who'd either been um diagnosed with terminal illnesses or they died and so it was, it was a real shake-up it was a message from the universe to me uh, that life is short it was kind of saying, oh, are you really living full out? Are you going for your desires? Are you asking for what you want? Are you risking everything, including your heart, to really receive it and to, to have the life that you want? And yeah, really, I wasn't. Uh, you know, it, it was really clear to me. I thought I had been. That was the thing. And to cut a long story short, what came out of this shake-up was the awareness of... Um, how alone and unsupported I was and uh, not because I didn't have friends and family and wonderful people in my life who were there for me but because I'd abandoned myself at a really young age and I'd never really fully reconnected so I wanted to uh, kind of talk a little bit about this because I know that this will have an impact on some people that it will resonate so hopefully from what I've been through you'll be able to maybe get some clarity uh, about things that might be going on in your own life particularly if you've been through a big shake-up so uh, and you know because when you always learn more from other people's stories don't you, you because well, that sense of resonating when you're sharing and you're sinking into your heart and feeling that's when it touches the deepest parts of us and things can rise to the surface and then we can see them. Hi, Sonia. Thanks for joining me. So anyway, without, um, I'm just talking about my story and about um, how I've sort of just come to an awareness of things of where I haven't really been living the life that I really want for myself, despite thinking that I, I had been. Um, so I'd sort of been... Um, kind of stuck in the illusion that I was really living with happiness. And I'll explain a bit more about that later. Um, anyway, what happened for me, really, without going into too much of the detail about the early story, um, was that I kind of made it through primary school um, by age 11 and discovered 
that or concluded at some level that I was unworthy of receiving love and like many of us and uh, for us lots of all, all sorts of different things happened at school uh, but for a sensitive little soul like me that this uh, caused a lot of pain and it really was too much to bear it was really overwhelming and so I had built this lovely big wall of protection around my heart and I disconnected from my body so that I didn't have to feel so much and as a result of that I was also disconnected from other people so I was sort of um I, I isolated myself and I'm sure many of you who are empaths or healers or are sensitive that you can really um, resonate with this and because this flawed self within me sort of split off and hid my early journey was all about improving myself um you know trying to make myself be acceptable enough to belong um or even to just grow beyond apologizing for existing you know it, it really was that bad I had such a kind of an inferiority complex when I was little, when I was young, school age. Um, and along the way of sort of transcending this, I discovered personal development and, and then I uh, discovered my spiritual path. And because it was easy for me to connect upwards to source, because, you know, part of me was already up there, it was safe up there. And, you know, it was there that I discovered the love that I'd been missing. and over time i learned uh how to follow the guidance by connecting more with with um source energy or with my higher self with my heart with my intuition and uh, you know started following its guidance and started learning how to channel it and to facilitate healing and transformation for others through this so it sort of you know really uh, put me on my path my uh to, to my purpose um but for whatever purpose my soul had come here to um you know to really fulfill i first i have an ability to bring through very pure high levels of source energy for other people which is essentially unconditional love um but because of my story because of my background because of all that uh, you know, inferiority stuff i'm also essentially quite a skeptic because I really needed to be certain that this energy would consistently produce results for people so that I wouldn't get uh, rejected and proved unworthy again. And so, and I also needed to be able to explain it because it made, it made me feel safer if there was some logic to it. And I needed the people that I worked with to experience this transformational energy uh, in a very direct and personal way so that they knew the truth of it for themselves because I didn't believe that they would value it from me otherwise. otherwise. Uh, so it's no surprise that, you know, in the end, as well as facilitating sessions with people, I also teach about consciousness and empowering yourself by directly connecting to your own spiritual power source. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't like I was doing this uh, I was doing it more because of the fear, you know, if you get what, what I mean. So, you know, the healing and transformation that takes place when uh, when you're hidden or um, scared or dark and rejected parts of you are, are held in the energy of love, uh, it, it's phenomenal. Um, so there I was seeing all these incredible shifts in abundance happening for my clients in, in different areas of their lives. And that made me feel really happy and fulfilled. Hi, Inga. Thanks for the hearts. <laughs> um, or at least I thought so. You know, this is this had been the work I've been doing for quite a few years now, probably about 20 years, really. Um, and it does touch me. I feel like my heart opens up. And obviously, when I'm working with people, I'm channeling energy through me. And so I'm guessing that direct connection with source energy in, in my heart anyway. And I, I made this the centre of my life and it served me really, really well while I was focusing all my energy on supporting and giving to others. Um, because when I was doing that, I didn't need to have, I didn't, uh, I didn't have to look at the holes in my own life. And uh, so although I thought I'd been happy, 
Oh, thanks, Inga. She's saying you look lovely today. <laughs> so although I thought I was really happy, uh, it was a bit of a... It wasn't quite the truth, shall we say. No, I I just got really good at distracting myself from not feeling lonely or sad that I had to do everything on my own in my business and uh, I wasn't making the money that I, I knew uh, my work was worth. Um, and there was another thing, this came up recently while I was planning for a workshop and I was kind of doing a meditation. I came up with this, um, hi Fidelma, I came up with this sort of awareness of when we give, because lots of us are givers, uh, and it's much easier to give than it is re to receive. It's like having the hose turned on. So, you know, it's going out all the time. And when, when the energy is going out from you, there's not really a capacity to receive it back. There's this force that's continually going outward, whether that's with people, you know, that you're working with one-to-one, -one, but also with your marketing, with your blogs, doing stuff at home, uh, you know, helping friends. If it's always going out, it's like that on that tap that's on, and it's not just a um, we don't in equal measure kind of make space to just stop and to fill up and receive and have it come back to us or consciously bring it in because that's quite unfamiliar. Um, and the thing, the reason that I believe that we do that is because it's when we're giving, it's so much easier to be in control. It's much easier to control your giving and feel safe um, than it is to kind of be vulnerable and receive what, what others want to give you or don't want to give you. Yeah, it, uh, Inga's agreeing, it's so much easier to give and to give away, T totally true. So I'd, uh, because I'd sort of abandoned myself all those years and years ago, I wasn't, I realized that I wasn't standing up for what I really wanted to receive in my business. So I have consistently discounted or undercharged uh, for the impact of the work that I do and I work my socks off doing it. Or I've decided I'm not going to work my socks off because I don't want to do it that way. But then because of my belief that things have to be, uh, you have to work hard to, to make money, I haven't made money. So I've taken the time and I've done the inner work, but then that's like, you know, it's perpetuated the, the lack because that's just the program that I'd been running. So, you know, there's all, all of this stuff's been going on brewing inside me. <laughs> and, um, you know, when if people really wanted the support from me, um, but they couldn't afford it. And quite often I would work out a way to exchange energy with them um, other than money. But uh, and money was the thing that I really needed. So it was always like putting others ahead of me. Uh, and because I wasn't standing true for myself, I wasn't supporting myself in a really loving way, even though I thought I was, um, because I'd abandoned my inner self I'd, I, I had disconnected and sort of she'd split off I was coming from my limited self uh, my disempowerment story and so when I was doing that and people were saying uh can we do an exchange can I can you can you uh can I have a, a discount or something like this I would meet them in their story of their disempowerment and agree to it and that is just not a powerful place to go obviously you know we have to hold people in their power for them to feel it and own it and step into it and uh, and come from that rather than the, the the limitation and so once i kind of realized all this and this um this event my my friend's mum dying and all of those other people dying uh, and me just going, okay, universe, I am not putting up with this shit anymore. I have to change this. I, and, and it was like, it just wasn't enough anymore. And, um, oh, thanks, Hannah. Thanks for telling me. It's, yeah, it does take courage to do this. So it was, it was like, I choose to be happy. I choose to be supported. I choose to be in a loving, conscious relationship with all kinds of people, including a soulmate. And uh, I choose for things to be easier. 
And I choose to have financial abundance now and not just to rely on trusting that the universe will support me when I need it, you know. Uh, and, and so I, I was getting really, I wouldn't say angry, but I was just like really getting impassioned, um, you know, and I had such a strong conviction and it was like me demanding it from the universe because I'd had enough and it was, I'd suddenly everything had become clear and the, the fog had gone. Um, and so then what happened? Oh, thank you, Sonia, saying she loves my honesty. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you've got to play it real, haven't you? So once I'd actually made this demand, all the shit started coming up. You know, I thought that had been the bad stuff um, or just, just some of the difficult stuff, not necessarily bad, but all, all the other stuff started coming up. Everything that wasn't in alignment with what I'd asked for from the universe started coming to the surface. All of the BS from within me, within my story, it started playing out in my life. Like all the life is hard and you've got to struggle stuff making money is hard and you can't enjoy it when you've when you've made it because something bad might happen and it might all you might lose it or or basically that it could only be made with a lot of effort and doing things that you don't really want to do which is like the story I picked up from watching my dad do that my whole childhood uh, also residual relationship relationship pain all got stirred up um things came out of the blue like what I was thinking why has the, why am I feeling like I've broken up with someone this is just you know it, it didn't make sense um also I was hiring people to do work for me but there's a lot of problems um technology crashed and burned several times and I know there was like a lot of mercury retrograde kind of patterns going on at the time but god it was so annoying like it took me forever to get my website um up and running I've got a new website that will come on another post or another <laughs> another blog um and it was just taking up so much of my time it's like pushing rocks uphill but I just kind of stayed very conscious with all of these changes that occurred oh, I've just seen Joanne's joined hi Joanne Oh, thank you. She's recommending my Magnetize Yourself to Money MP3. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was staying conscious with all of these uh, feelings and all this negative stuff that was coming up. And um, it, just really trying to stay focused on what I did desire and getting into the energy of that. And that that's uh, what Joanne has just posted there, that Magnetize Yourself to Money. I was playing that every day. It's like a 15 minute audio. Um, it's like an energy process to help you get into the energy and vibration of what you do desire. But also, like I was saying before, it's about pulling energy in. So being in that practice of receiving rather than always the giving. So uh, and it's really powerful. <laughs> I've had lots of people come back to me going, wow, and things, massive changes happening in their lives. So uh, it, it blows me away a bit that <laughs> the changes that are happening to people. So really really happy to uh hear that i'll put a, a link to it so if you want a copy you can just like download it so i'll put that in the, in the comments box after so i was kind of going through all of this i was allowing the energy to come up i was staying focused and uh as a result of doing all of this inner work some really obvious things started changing and the, the biggest one was i started being surrounded by offers of support from all kinds of people people that I really loved and respected that you know I loved their work and I started seeing uh, evidence and really fabulous examples of healthy conscious relationships that empowered each person to be true to themselves to follow their own heart without losing themselves in another in the other and um, and and even my, that was, that was quite strange, my ex-partner from New Zealand came over for a visit out of the blue and uh, even that facilitated some kind of like healing or resolution that I hadn't even realised uh, there was any kind of residual pain there, but that, that cleared. Um, things have been becoming much easier in my business. Like I mentioned that I've like took taken a total step back. I've hardly done any marketing hardly been on Facebook other than in like one or two groups. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've, I may have sent one or two emails, but not very often. Haven't done a blog. Um, 
and I've done one live stream this year apart from this one so you know I've really not been doing much to put myself out there but I still sold out two Activate Abundance workshops and had amazing days at each. And the second one, I didn't even have to organize it. You know, it was all arranged for me by an amazing client and friend who wanted to introduce my work to her network. So all I had to do was show up and facilitate. You know, it was a dream come true. And, and there are more of these in the pipeline and possibly in other areas. That was in Worthing. I've been doing them in Hertfordshire. I might be doing one in Southampton. I'd love to kind of do this all around the UK if possible. And apart from that, I've received several other really exciting invitations to collaborate on big and small projects from, from the other people that I really love and admire. Um, I took a, a step to turn down working with an amazing woman. Um, I, I'd done some work for her for free and I'd sent her my uh, that energy process again uh, because she was really down on her luck, but she was on the verge of a massive breakthrough. And we were just in the process of talking about how can we do some exchange because she's like so skilled and has a, a, a massive um, experience as a business owner. Uh, but I realized I bought into her disempowerment story and I explained to her in the end that she needed to come from her power to work with me and to pay me the clear exchange of money for uh, the transformation. And it was the first time I'd done that and, you know, it felt really powerful. It took me ages to write the email, but it felt powerful to send it off. And then she emailed me um, back to, to say that she'd had a massive turnaround and there's a, the potential of um, like one of the um, Silicon Valley top entrepreneurs who are more conscious. She's got actually got like an appointment with him uh, to talk about how she can get her work into co the corporate areas of um, in, around San Francisco or Silicon Valley uh, area. So, you know, this, this has been amazing. Uh, and alongside that, <laughs> so there's a lot, there's lots of abundance here. Uh, I've, I've received gifts of over £5,000. These are gifts. Uh, I've even had a £350 credit from my electricity company. <laughs> um, I've been able to have weekly, if not twice weekly, healing and transformation sessions f f for myself to clear up anything that comes up or to highlight anything that's being kept hidden from me. And I've, I've connected with an amazing group of highly conscious people who are so supportive. And it's the first time I've ever felt really held and seen and loved unconditionally, no matter what I'm struggling with or what I'm celebrating. And that has never, I've never felt that before. Um, and the biggest gift of all whilst doing all of this inner work is that I've reclaimed that part of me that I'd abandoned. In fact, I, you know, reconnecting with that little girl inside me um, and showering her with love and attention and affection and reclaiming her and standing by her and, and for her and allowing all the shitty feelings of worthlessness and rejection to come up to be released. That's been the key to this abundance shift. I'm certain of it. And, you know, miracles have been happening in, in lots of small ways, almost daily. So, you know, I, I can feel this um, wall of protection has gone. And I felt like my heart's been really exposed and it's been really weird. Um, but, but And it had been, this wall had been a constant fixture and I'd never even realised it was there. Um, but I also feel quite wobbly sometimes. I wasn't sure if I'd end up bursting into tears on, on this live stream because that's happened on odd calls here and there whilst this has been happening. And uh, yeah, amazing. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. And uh, yeah, Fidama, that's right. It is. It's amazing when we let go. Hi, Claire. And um, yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> it's been a bit like riding a bike without stabilizers for the first time. And as I said, I can get quite emotional because I'm feeling so much more in my heart. So things can get a bit messy, but I'm just really showing up, being real and um, not holding stuff in anymore. It's like, no, if that's how I'm feeling, the feelings are valid. 
and it feels like when I show up as real it gives permission for everybody else to do that and so we all become a little bit more real when when this is mirrored to us or when you know when we see it so you know bloody hell my heart is beating really strong but I feel so alive and it's amazing <laughs> so if you've recently been through an experience that's shaken you up shaken up your world so much that you made like a powerful demand to the universe for help and now you're experiencing uh like feelings that remind you of painful memories uh but you, you they don't maybe don't seem to make a lot of sense or lots of things just seem to be breaking down or crashing around you um or you're just feeling like a lot of emotion or feeling raw feeling like uh teary and there's no kind of obvious kind of stimulus for that nothing's happened it's just stuff that's uh arising then it, it could be that this is in response to what you've been asking for because you're in a you're a powerful infinite being and you are always influencing the field of consciousness to create your reality uh, but you may be stuck in a, a limiting story or your powerlessness or in some kind of confusion and you might have forgotten that all possibilities are open to you that anything you wish to be do or have it already exists for you on on the quantum level it's just about you just need to claim it with all your heart and be prepared to go into your own dark places and, and release the pain and the fear that will it will show up as you go there because it's it's part of the process it's like you're sending that message out to the universe and it brings you the experiences or the triggers or it brings you this the circumstances to to kind of trigger you to bring stuff into consciousness that is in within you that needs to be released so that your vibration will consistently raise and when when you, you're vibration is at the right level or higher level what you want will just become instantly attracted that's when they say you know attract with ease it's like it's not, it's not really easy to get there but it's effortless when you are at that that vibration because that's just the vibration you're at you just attract that into your life it's just you know as you know it's law of attraction uh very liberating yes <laughs> so um you know you you can go into these uh, dark places yourself and uh you know that it takes it takes time or it takes like a big thing like a shake up something happens in major in life uh for you to kind of see this stuff if you and if you're con conscious you'll catch it and you'll be able to do some work with it but a lot of the time we just can't see ourselves. It's like, you know, you can't <laughs> you can't lick the end of your elbow. We're not designed to do all of this stuff. You can't see the back of your own head. We need other people. And I've had uh, a lot of work. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work with other people for this uh, to help me through this. And it's been amazing. So um, if I can help you move through anything where you're stuck if, if you would like my help for your journey this is what i do best you know if you just want to dip your toe into the water of this work with of um, manifesting abundance uh come on a, an activate abundance workshop I'll, I'll be putting more dates out soon uh but if you're really ready to take the leap of faith and follow your heart using alchemy and energy to create what you desire even though you've got no idea how it can happen which i didn't <laughs> and you're willing to take that walk in the dark and meet those hidden aspects of yourself that you've rejected in the past which which are keeping you small blocking your abundance uh and you uh you know if you want to live from and trust your infinite self and your true spiritual power and expand beyond what you currently believe is possible and that it sort of living from there excites the pants off you then there are ways that you can work with me um one-to-one -one as part of a journey and if you'd like to have a, a discovery call with me about that to help you decide what might be right for you then uh, just drop me an email at kathy at kathyballard.com or send me a message on facebook because i'd love to hear from you but this is such fun work and it's really really powerful and i think the more uh we have people sort of mirroring this back to us it just helps us believe that bit 
more each time. Um, you, you just need to feel the truth within yourself. And when, when you get a bit of momentum going, then you start just expanding more and more and more and more possibilities open up. So, I, oh, great, it's been happening for Fidelma too. Brilliant. <laughs> so if, you, if there's anything that I can help you with, do uh, let me know. If you've got any questions, um, pop them in the comment box and I will either answer them now if, they, if you're, uh, if, if that comes up now or um, I can answer them after or just drop me an email if there's anything that you need that I can help with then um, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. So that's it from me for tonight for my, <laughs> my first live stream back in the saddle. So uh, I will see you all again very soon. Take care for now. Bye.